In this moving story, follow Ahmed, a brilliant young boy from the village of Ojumo, who loses his father to cruel circumstances and rises against all odds to become a man of success. Once upon a time in a small village called Ojumo, there was a boy named Ahmed. He lived with his father Yusuf in a small cramped boy's quarter that belonged to a wealthy man named Taiwo. Taiwo owned the biggest house in the village, a sprawling mansion with tall gates and a big yard. He was feared and respected because he had money, and in a village where most people struggled to survive, that meant he had power. Ahmed's mother had died giving birth to him. So Yusuf, his father, had raised him alone ever since. Yusuf worked as a servant for Taiwo, doing all kinds of chores around the compound. He washed Taiwo's clothes, cleaned his house, and even took care of his animals. Ahmed would help his father when he wasn't at school, sweeping the yard and fetching water from the well. The pay was small, but it was all they had. Their room in the boys' quarter was tiny, with just one bed that they shared, a small cooking pot, and a few old clothes. Taiwo never treated them with kindness. He would shout at Yusuf for the smallest mistakes and paid them just enough to survive. Taiwo had a wife and two children, all living comfortably in the big house, while Ahmed and his father struggled. But Yusuf never complained. He would always tell Ahmed, Life is hard, but we must work with what we have. Ahmed loved his father deeply. Even though they had very little, his father's strength and kindness were a constant source of comfort. One night, Ahmed noticed something strange. There were rats in their room. At first, they thought it was just one or two. But soon, the rats became bold, scurrying around, nibbling at their clothes, chewing on their shoes, and even on the pots they used to cook. No matter how hard they tried to chase them away, the rats always came back. They chewed through everything, making it almost impossible to live peacefully. Ahmed and his father complained to Taiwo, hoping he would help them. But Taiwo simply waved them off, saying, Rats, that's your problem. Fix it yourself. Yusuf and Ahmed had no choice but to bear the rats, but things only got worse. One night, Ahmed woke up with a sharp pain in his hand. When he looked, he saw blood. A rat had bitten him while he slept. He screamed, waking his father. Yusuf lit the small lamp, and that's when they saw it. The rats had grown more aggressive. They were chewing on their hands and feet while they slept. Every night became a battle to keep the rats away. But no matter what they did, the rats kept coming back. Soon, Yusuf fell ill. His skin was pale and he coughed constantly. His hands trembled as he worked, but still he refused to stop. Ahmed begged his father to rest, but Yusuf said they needed the money. They couldn't afford to stop working. Taiwo, as usual, didn't care. When Yusuf's illness became too much, Ahmed pleaded with Taiwo to help. He asked for some money to get some medicine. Taiwo gave them at first, but when the money was not enough and Ahmed came back again pleading, Taiwo refused, saying, It's not my concern. You people are always looking for handouts. Yusuf's condition worsened. His fever raged and he could no longer stand. One cold morning, Ahmed woke up to find his father's body stiff and lifeless. Yusuf had died during the night, his body worn down by illness and the rat bites. Ahmed cried like he had never cried before. His father, his only family, was gone. The village mourned Yusuf, for everyone knew him as a kind and hardworking man. But Taiwo didn't attend the funeral. He continued with his life as if nothing had happened. Ahmed, now an orphan, felt completely alone. Yet, even in his grief, he had one thing that kept him going. School. Ahmed was a brilliant student. He studied harder than anyone else, spending every spare moment reading his school books by the dim light of the lamp in the boys' quarter. His teachers noticed his brilliance, and soon, word spread about the boy who had lost his father but still excelled in his studies. One day, something remarkable happened. 
Ahmed received a letter from his teacher. It was from the state government, offering him a scholarship to study medicine at the university level. Ahmed's results from his senior secondary leaving certificate exams had been the best in the state. The government wanted to sponsor his education, to help him become a doctor, just as he had always dreamed. Ahmed left Ojumo and traveled to the city. University life was tough, but he was determined. He studied medicine with passion, fueled by the memory of his father and the hope that he could help others who suffered like Yusuf had. He vowed to fight the diseases that took people's lives because they couldn't afford treatment. After many years of hard work, Ahmed graduated as one of the best students in his class. He became a respected doctor, known for his skill and compassion. He eventually became wealthy and even opened his own hospital. One rainy afternoon, Ahmed was at the hospital, reviewing patient files when a nurse walked in. She handed him a file and said, Dr. Ahmed, this patient was just admitted. He's in a critical condition. The illness is severe, and it looks like it's been going on for a while. Ahmed took the file and scanned through the details. His eyes widened when he saw the name on the file, Taiwo Adeyemi. He paused. Could it be? Was this the same Taiwo? the man who had once treated his father and him so poorly. The sickness that plagued Taiwo was the same rat-borne disease that had killed Yusuf all those years ago. Ahmed went to the patient's room. There, lying on the hospital bed, was Taiwo. The years had not been kind to him. His face was gaunt, his body frail, and his breathing shallow. Taiwo was unconscious, fighting for his life. Ahmed stood by the bed, staring at the man who had once held so much power over him and his father. For a moment, memories of the past flooded back. The rats, the hunger, his father's death. A part of him wanted to walk away, to leave Taiwo to the same fate Yusuf had suffered. But Ahmed was not that kind of person. He was a doctor now, and his duty was to save lives, no matter whose life it was. Over the next few days, Ahmed and his team worked tirelessly to treat Taiwo. The treatment was difficult, and there were moments when it seemed like Taiwo wouldn't survive. But slowly, his condition improved. One morning, Taiwo opened his eyes for the first time since being admitted. He looked around the room, confused. His gaze fell on Ahmed, who stood quietly by the window, watching him. Taiwo stared at Ahmed for a long moment, squinting as if trying to place his face. Do I know you? Taiwo asked, his voice weak. Ahmed walked closer and smiled, but it was a sad smile. Yes, he said softly. You knew my father, Yusuf. We lived in your boy's quarter many years ago. Taiwo's eyes widened in shock. He gasped, his mind racing to connect the dots. The doctor standing before him was the boy he had once ignored, whose father he had refused to help when he was sick and had died because of it. Ahmed looked at him with a faint smile. You're getting better now, but take your time. You need to rest well. When you're fully recovered, we can talk. And with that, Ahmed turned and left the room, leaving Taiwo to reflect on the past and the boy he had never thought would rise so high. Ahmed left the room with a quiet peace settling over him, deeply aware of how life had its own way of coming full circle. Though his father was no longer alive, Ahmed had grown into everything Yusuf had dreamed for him, a man of integrity, success, and unshaken compassion. What do you think of this amazing story? Do you like the way Ahmed treated Taiwo with compassion in the end? Or should he have repaid him with the same cruelty? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This encourages us to keep making more stories that you'll love.